So this is a 1940s, I guess, maybe early 1950s pocket metronome. Strictly mechanical. Made by a company in Switzerland. Um, apparently this was the only thing they made. They didn't make any type of actual watches for timekeeping. Even though they were, I guess, organized as a watch company. Now you push this button and it sets it in motion. And although it does make a noise, it's more of a visual thing. And when you put that again, it goes over and parks and stops. Now this tooth wheel right here changes the frequency of the beat. It's got a pretty simple mechanism in it. It's actually pretty decent quality. You got nice uh, blued hands in it and so forth. Now there's the mechanism, the movement, if you will. And that's the mainspring under this wheel right here, centered. You unscrew that cap. You put a put a spanner or a set of tweezers in there and unscrew that cap and then the winding wheel comes off. The mainspring is in that barrel. I'm going to turn that. You can just see the barrel and you can see the outside barrel hook of the mainspring. Now this big flat disc here is kind of the equivalent of a balance. When I push on the crown it engages this pusher that you're seeing running down through the middle of the movement and against that spring. And then you look down here, there's a, a star wheel. And that star wheel's got some apparatus. You'll notice here a tension spring. And what that star wheel does is freeze this up to do its business. Then you see down there, it's kind of got a rocker. There's a pinion on the underside of that flywheel. That's pivoted in there. And then there's an escape wheel. You can kind of just, there you go, see its nasty little escape wheel teeth. Right there, it's a pin lever escape wheel. And shifting to change the frequency of it, actually, it's kind of a neat little device. Shifts the carriage to or fro. See if I can do it while well, well, I've got it running. There we go. And we bring it further out. You see it's pulling further away on that lever. There's a geared brass wheel you see that geared brass wheel that's moving in there that's actually got a pipe on it that's attached to the indicator hand that shows the frequency there you see i've reached the end of the there's the end of its travel right there where the teeth are out Now you notice there's a slot in there. That slot has a piece that plays in it about like a roller jewel in a watch. Not real sure I can get that closer without actual mechanical magnification, but you can see it in there doing its thing. And you see that flywheel moving. You can hear how very slow it is. Now, we bring it down. See, we're shortening the length of the pendulum, as it were. And then those little wheel teeth there 
engage on opinion on the bottom of this flywheel. Now this flywheel's shimmying a little. I wonder it's got a maybe has a bent pivot. It's been dropped. There's this beastly little escapement. And the noise that it's making is those escape wheel teeth hitting those big heavy pallet lever pins. When I last cleaned it, uh, I lubricated those pins with a head, with a kind of a grease instead of an oil simply because I couldn't get an oil that would stay on there. Now, if you look down in there, you'll kind of see a, one of the wheels. And because there is no indicator, the wheels can be pretty much wherever they need to be. That's that one pivot right there, past my finger. And then I kind of think that's the only wheel beside the escape wheel. There's its nasty little escape wheel. And then when we push, now you see that, uh, you see that uh, star wheel there. That stops it. That starts it again. And when it stops, it goes all the way over and parks. I've had that out of the cabinet, or out of its case. It's actually a pretty well-made little movement. And the whole little trolley with the, with the flywheel comes out of there. Now it's about run down. You can hear it tick. The case kind of almost acts like a resonator uh, with that back. I'll show you again this. And we push this again. And it parks. It took me a while to figure this out, but when it parks, it's because the hand that goes back and forth is attached directly to that, uh, that uh, assembly that rocks back and forth. And... Uh, not the lever, but there's a, the sub-assembly that's in there. Uh, anyway, it has a long pivot that goes through on the, and then attaches at the very edge of the movement. So when it's stopping it, there's a tail on there. And when those levers come in to stop it, it catches that tail and it stops it at the left-hand side and parks it. You can make it park somewhere else but it's not frequent anyway I just thought someone might get a kick out of that you see these on Evil Bay now and then and uh, you'll see people have them for sale and it seems like they're always screaming how rare they are I don't think they're particularly rare it's just that when people have them they kind of hang on to them uh, I talked to a friend of mine that sold them brand new in the 60s and they said that they made a real good graduation present for people that were going to go to a musical conservatory or were going to major in music or were big into music. 
And I have a friend that's a retired piano teacher who remembered getting one about 1975. But it was a little newer model than this. This thing is something right around the Second World War. They made one before this that was kind of a long-stemmed pocket watch from looked like something in the 20s that had an actual enamel dial on it. Um, but this one here has always been perfect for me. and So, give you something to look for, I guess. Anyway, I just thought people might get a kick out of seeing it.